the MVP Nikola Jokic and a struggling undermanned Denver Nuggets team comes to the Garden, loses a seven out of their last eight games, and they would find a way to get back on track by absolutely embarrassing the New York Knicks on their home court. As we said, the MVP is the MVP. You know, he's, he's a great player. He's a superstar for a reason. It's going to be hard to slow him down. But make no mistake, this Knicks defense has been a shell of itself. And, and the inconsistencies is just hurting this team, man. Thirty points. That that's my that's my margin right there. That's how much they lost by in my book. Because after that, you could throw the whole game out the window. No defense. No good rotations whatsoever. We just allowed Denver to do whatever they wanted against us. And then the Knicks started settling for threes on offense, jump shots, even work the paint as we saw them do the last couple of games. Just an overall poor effort from the Knicks. It's this team's so inconsistent, man. I really don't get it. I don't know how we can watch three games, them working the paint and just dominating and just really giving out like 120 yeah. percent effort and then tonight they decided to go not even 50 percent it looked like they were ca- yeah. looked like they just came back from brunch just like walking off that uh that meal and just trotting man no one's re- no one was out there doing a lot it was it was gross absolutely gross today uh, abysmal man abysmal I, I really don't even know where to point to on the positives but as you said you know it's a Jekyll and Hyde thing here we are against the Chicago Bulls 60 points in the paint we are attacking Julius doesn't even take a three-point shot he's attacking every single possession and you come in against a Nuggets team that is almost last in the league in points in the paint last in the league in opponents two-point percentage willing and able to give you points inside (laughs) and you know we're sitting around dancing around the perimeter man dancing around the perimeter you know not having a consistent threat at the point occasionally it hurts us man you know nights like this it it hurts us because we we just weren't attacking enough yeah burks got to the line He, he did get to the line but in terms of just generating easy it's it just doesn't come easy for us bro when your defense is so terrible, we're not getting stops. So we're not getting out in transition, which which was another uh, uh, strength of ours from last year. So it's just all bad. Three losses in a row, under 500 for the first time this year. Tough, tough one to sit through. Yeah, like no, no ball movement on offense. Like no one's getting to the teeth of defense and making those kickout passes. Like it started that way. And then as always, it just fades into isolation basketball. I don't know how we just consistently get into isolation basketball, but we end up here and then we just have to watch everyone just shoot. It's like playing a terrible game of pickup basketball where no one's just moving off ball. And that's the other thing I'm watching this Nuggets team. They'll be setting backdoor screens for each other, yeah. moving without the ball, yeah. doing, you know, natural basketball team things. And then we're watching our team. Everyone's out on the perimeter with Mitch inside or Noel, or whoever. And everyone's just standing around watching either Julius Burks, somebody to yeah. do something. And I just don't understand how you how how can you have how can you play team basketball and not just do the simple things like the simple things to get you easy points. Mm. We didn't even score in transition. Couldn't score like, in transition. We didn't even we didn't even take advantage of that. And then guys are just forcing like we had five fast break points today. By the half we had zero. Mm. We had zero fast break points today. Mm. And then we end the game with five. Like that's supposed to be our bread and butter, especially when we have Obi Toppin and Derrick Rose who can get out into transition and get those easy buckets. And the other thing today was just guys just forcing too many inside passes. Yeah, Got, no yeah. one was looking to like look for the guys on the perimeter who are open on the perimeter to start off with. They were trying to get these easy looks when everyone's just crowding the paint. Forcing. And then when everyone starts to circle out, like, oh, let's just kick it out and let someone shoot from three. It's like now you have guys open in the paint. Yeah, It's not even just a once in a while, all right, trap game, anything like that. This has been – this has been all season mm-hmm. where we're just doing the same thing over and over and over. I write, like I, like I said before, I do game notes. And everyone's like been telling me, like, Alex, this is the same thing. You could copy and paste this for every game. And it's like, yes. It's to point out the fact that we're <laughs> not doing anything different. Yeah. We are legitimately not doing anything different. It and, is- uh, you know, listen, like I said, the, the, the Joker's the Joker. Uh, I figured Mitch was going to have trouble with him. But I also felt like you got to you gotta make him a little bit uncomfortable, man. You got to respect that shot. You got to close off his airspace. And if he puts the ball on the floor, 
Yes, Mitch has gained weight. No, he's not as, as uh, you know, nimble as he was. But he should be able to keep up with that. And if you foul, foul. We got three We got three centers on the bench. We got Mitch Noel. We got Taj. I don't recall if Sims was healthy or not. He was out sick. You could play OB in a pinch at the five. You could play Julius at the five. We got we got to play him a little bit more physical, a little bit harder. Cut off his airspace and not, and not make him so comfortable, man. I, I didn't think we did a good mm-hmm. job in really trying to throw him off balance at all in this game, man. We gave him everything that he wanted. And he's great. He's the MVP. He is the MVP, man. So I, I, I didn't like the job that we did on him, at least just trying to make things a little bit more difficult. Bro, this is the most, like, I don't know what the hell are we doing this game. We're playing like we're trying to tank for the number one pick. What are we doing? <laughs> I mean, like, it's crazy. It's so crazy, bro. Everyone played like garbage, bro. Well, Everyone know, played Michael. like Let's garbage. Go. Like garbage. Absolute trash, bro. Like you want us to play better than anyone who played like, like the Knicks tonight, bro. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it's it's so it's so humiliating. It's like we should have this game. We should, but we don't. And there's so many times with this game that I'm I I can't even talk about it. Like Tibbs, yeah, he could have done better, but he he can't do everything when the players are not playing good. Yes, he could do yeah. better, but you can't completely blame Tennis and say fire him when everyone was in a minus except Grimes. Nine for 18, two for seven, mm-hmm. two for five, two for six, six for 14, five for 13 in the starting lineup. Fournier has five assists. He's the second most assists. And look at Evan Fournier, who did not average one three assists in his career, average five assists. You can't, you can't let Evan Fournier get the second most assists. Where's the point guard? Where, where, like, you can't let that happen. You can't. It's, it's, it's turn blasphemy. Turn right now. Let's like, go. You can't, you can't let that happen. There's no locker room presence. Julius Randle is not a locker room leader. Theo mm. is. Julius, he's not. Julius Randle can't hype up a team. Theo can. Mm. Okay. I mean, it, it's that simple. Like, you, we, we can't be, we can't be playing this bad. We have to have someone who has to spark it up. And no one, no one is like that on this team. We're like the Walking Dead. We're just dead. Mm. This team, as presently constructed. It's not it. It's not it. And and I don't know, like I, I don't know if like going forward, I don't know if anybody was watching that that post game conference. Tibbs and Randall, man, they they said what it was and what it is. They're ready to wave the white flag. Like so what Jay from Florida was saying that Leon, the godfather, gotta pick a decision. Either go get some people that are better than Randall, but that means you gotta trade the youth. That means you gotta I don't trade know. The youth. I don't know. I, I, as a Knicks fan, I'm not. I don't. I don't know how to feel about that because I'm RJ's biggest supporter. Yeah. Everybody knows I don't really like Mitch, but I see. I mean, CP in the chat they was talking about Brandon Ingram and and, and Valanciunas for Mitch, RJ, and some a couple picks. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Oh, I, I I bring Brandon Ingram here in a heartbeat before Zion. I, nah, nah. And then obviously the the last three names are the obvious three names that everybody always talks about. Fox. Ben, yeah. Dame. I, I'm just saying, I don't like to talk trade speculation, but going, I got to keep it real, CP. This team ain't it, bro. This team is borderline playing. And in an Eastern Conference, that's way better. I can't even guarantee you that. Like, yeah. I can't guarantee it. Well, here, here's the thing. After making the fourth seed in the playoffs last year, there is no way that the same fan base that is talking about we should tank, we should tank, we should tank, they would not accept that this year. See, see, these fans talk out, out of their ass all the time. You just made the fourth seed in the playoffs. Now you want them to just go straight youth movement? That is not how it works. You would never accept that. And then when they start losing, guess what Guess what you're going to hear next? Get Tibbs out of here. Get Leon out of here. They're all <laughs> terrible. They're all this... You can't make a Nick fan happy, man. Right? Can't. If right now, if I was James Dolan, I would call a meeting and air everybody out completely behind them doors because I don't done everything you asked me to do to put together the office, the bench, and the players, and I've been completely out the way, and y'all are not responding to this New York fan base, period. I refuse to go back to where y'all fought hard to get 
from. We came a long way to get from where we was to get to this point coming to this season to turn around backwards and do it all wrong again. Step your game up. Look yourself in the mirror and say, that's not my game I've been playing in this 2021 season. I owe it to myself. I owe it to the fans, and I'm going to do better the next game. That's how you come out, and you come on fire and stick your man up full court and stop waiting to have court. 